You are watching the press preview, a first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. In the next half hour, we'll see what's making the headlines with the assistant editor of the Sunday Mirror, Laura Armstrong, and the editor of the Jewish Chronicle, Jake Wallace-Simons. So let's uh, see what's on some of those front pages for you now. Well, the Sunday Telegraph leads on climate advisers' demands for ministers to halt the expansion of airports. The headline, Sunak defies net zero ban on new airports. A civil service whistleblower has revealed a culture of complacency on school safety. That's on the front of the Observer. While the Sunday People says that 7,000 more schools are at risk of closure. And that story also leads the front of the Sunday Times. The Mail on Sunday quotes Tesco boss Ken Murphy, who says our staff need body cameras to end attacks. MOD hit by hackers reads the front of the Sunday Mirror. The Sunday Express reports on the Chancellor saying the government is on track to meet its pledge to halve inflation by the end of the year. And uh, I've found my Mr Ride, the star, reports on a woman who has fallen in love with a roller coaster. For the second time, apparently. <laughs> and uh, a reminder that by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. And we are joined tonight by Laura Armstrong from the Sunday Mirror and the editor of the Jewish Chronicle, Jake Wallace-Simons. Welcome to you both. We're not going to talk about the star, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are starting with the Sunday people and the story that's been uh, ongoing for the past few days. The, the state of our schools and later we find out other public buildings because of this uh, concrete, uh, crumbling concrete crisis. Jake. Yes, the Sunday people are suggesting that 7,000 more schools may be at risk of having this crumbling concrete, uh, which will likely result in supports and struts having to be put into these schools to keep them up, to make sure the children are safe when they come to school. But until that happens, kids are going to be off school again after the pandemic harmed their education so badly over the past two or three years. It's the last thing that children need, especially as we've had teacher strikes as well, harming their education and their progress uh, on top of that. So there's been a lot in the papers about this uh, recently, and a lot about this again in uh, Sunday's papers. Um, the Observer, The Telegraph, it's all over the place. Uh, the Observer has a whistleblower from within the Department of Education suggesting that the Tories were dangerously complacent and wanted to save money rather than look at the structural problems. I mean, the fact that a, a hand grenade has been lobbed from the civil service into the Tory party doesn't, comes as no surprise, uh, I think, in this, in this context. But nonetheless, there does seem to be a bit, a bit of incompetence, shall we say, in getting to grips or failing to get to grips with this, this problem that's compounded by the fact the government is not releasing the list of schools that are going to be affected, leaving a lot of parents in limbo. Yes, and the, the timing has to be the big factor in, in this, Laura, that uh, children go back to school on Monday, a lot of children go back on, on, on Monday, uh, and this was certainly known about way before the, the start of the summer, in fact, possibly years before. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, there's from the very first that this, these buildings were built, they always had a finite shelf life. They, they were always going to reach the end of their natural life in the 1990s. And there have been warnings back as far as 1995 to indicate that this was about to become a problem. You know, in 2018, there was a school in Kent that its roof caved in. And at that point, obviously, it won some further attention. Luckily, in that instance, no one was there, no one was harmed. But it didn't, it didn't prompt those big changes that you would expect in such a near miss. You know, and, and it's well documented that this is a problem that was coming. You know, in, in 2020, the Department of Education recommended that $5.3 billion a year be spent on rebuilding some of these structures. And in the last six years, just $2.3 billion has been spent. They, they really have dropped the ball on this one. And they put it on the back burner. And, and as Jake says, it's the kids that are paying the price for it because they've... They're, in some cases, their education is being disrupted, you know, for the third consecutive year. And it adds insult to injury that we're not getting the full picture of what is, which schools are affected and how badly. You know, the government are hiding behind this sort of uh, line that we're not telling anyone until the parents have been made aware. But for thousands and thousands of parents, you know, I'm one of them, you're waiting to hear if that's going to be you and it just adds insult to injury. And so close to, to the start of term. Uh, 
Jake, tell us a bit more about this um, whistleblower. We'll move to the observer, the senior civil service whistleblower um, who worked in the private office of Nadim Zahawi uh, when he was then education secretary. And, and he's saying that, um, the whistleblower that is, he said ministers and, and special advisers were trying to get away with spending as little as they could and hoping to make do rather than treating the problem with the urgency it required. Yes, I mean, I touched on this just now, that the Observer have got hold of this whistleblower, anonymous whistleblower, who's working in the private office of Nadim Zahawi when he was Education Secretary. Um, and this whistleblower is making pretty predictable criticisms of the Tory Education Secretary, saying that he was dangerously complacent, or ministers in general were dangerously complacent, and they were more concerned with saving money than improving safety, uh, and trying to get away with spending as little as they could as if this, this is some sort of manifestation of Tory miserliness. And, you know, trying to save money is a good thing in the public sector, not spending money where it doesn't need to be spent. On this occasion, obviously, money did need to be spent, and that was an error. But I'm not sure that it's really fair to, to pin it on some kind of inherent Tory quality to be miserly and not to want to invest in, uh, in the infrastructure and, and in, in the public sector. Um, but certainly, this is a, a problem that does need to be uh, need to be addressed. But you know, one word of, of, of defence of, of the ministers and, and the Department of Education over the past few years, they've had a lot to deal with. You know, the pandemic, for one thing, has been devastating, and you know, the schools minister, the education minister, has been had a lot on their plate to deal with that. And they haven't performed particularly well in many cases, keeping kids away from schools when they should have got them into school. In my opinion. Uh, but there's been a lot to deal with there. There's been an economic crisis. There's been the war in Ukraine, the budgets. There's been inf inflation, sky high, cost of living. All of these things have been piling up, and that's led them to take their eye off the ball. I'm not saying they should not. They're right to take their eye off the ball. They should have dealt with this earlier. But I can see how they've lost control of this thing. Laura, do you, do you agree? Do you think that they can be defended in, in this uh, scenario? When we look at the, the Sunday Telegraph, they're suggesting that pupils could face years of misery um, over the, the, the crumbling concrete. Uh, 2005 was the, uh, the reported year that it might uh, come to a conclusion. I mean, yes, I, I see. I mean, the, the fact that disturbed me the most in that piece is the line that says there's no target date for eliminating the potentially dangerous material. Where does that leave us? You know, they are, there are reports also um, in other papers that these kind of, these buildings, these temporary buildings that are going to be put up are going to be put up potentially for decades in order to ensure that the buildings themselves that are affected with RAC are going to be safe. I mean, I think in the government's defence, I, I do think there, there were a lot of red flags that were missed here, but the one crucial defence is that there's no children harmed. Like, luckily, in that case, in 2018 in Kent, no one was in the building at the time. This has been reacted on before anyone has actually got hurt. Let's move on uh, just before the break and have a look at the um, Sunday Express and uh, Rishi Sunak apparently on course to fulfil his key promise to the nation and halve inflation and the Chancellor saying that uh, they've proved the doubters wrong and um, the plan, they'll be planned uh, to cut inflation even further. Our plan is working, the government's unlocking the UK's potential, Jake. This is the build-up to the Chancellor's autumn statement, which is coming out soon. Uh, Jeremy Hunt has been... He's on the front of the Express, as we can see, and he's across the papers as well elsewhere, writing for the Sunday Telegraph as well. Um, and the, the, the main... The sort of background to this is that the right of the Tory party is clamouring for tax cuts. The tax burden is sky-high, highest it's been since the Second World War. It does need to come down if we want to see proper growth. We had some good economic news... Uh, a few days ago, saying that we'd, we'd been too negative about, about Britain, and actually we are doing quite well by comparison to the other G7 countries. Um, but we, we do need to see tax cuts in the view of the Tory right, and I can see that. Um, but Jeremy Hunt, what he's saying is that he wants to get inflation down to 2%. And that's interesting, because in January, they pre promised to halve inflation, which then was at 10%, so that would have been to 5 Now he's setting a further goal of 2%, which is the target that Gordon Brown set the Bank of England back in 2003. So it seems as if he's pushing tax cuts further off down the road until we hit this 2% target. And that was reinforced by Michael Gove giving a podcast, uh, saying in a podcast to the FT that tax cuts weren't going to happen anytime soon, effectively. Uh, and so this is, in a way, the undercurrent of this is a rebuke to the...